Good morning everyone, it's Rachel here and we are doing Roxy's weekly challenge. Um, and this is something I haven't done for a while and I'm also going to add something new to it. Um, but we're going to do some swatching on all different pieces of paper. I've just been warming up um, and I'm using my watercolours. You could use acrylic paints, I've done it with acrylic paints before. And you can also do it with um, watercolours, whatever, gouache as well. And so I've got a variety of different papers here. And what I think I might do is I want to give myself some confined, some space where I want to do it. So I'm going to sort of tear this up. It's a crinkly one, so I don't mind tearing it up. And I'm going to have some little strips of all different sizes where I'm going to do my little swatching. And um, it's really fun. And it's a really nice way to embellish journal cards. So I think I'll tear up this a little bit here. I'll do a few big ones and a few smaller ones. And I've done it before, um, probably a few times on video, but um, really haven't done it for a really long time. I think sometime last year, maybe even mid last year, I don't remember. And then we're going to do it on a different substrate as well. So that's a few pieces of that one and what else do I've got? Just a random select amount of old pieces of paper here. And not old, some not old. Just a sec. Don't probably don't want anything too shiny. I could do I don't know how it will go on the straw paper. On the straw paper I would tend to use more um, probably acrylic because you don't, if it's too watery, all you're going to see is the colour of the straw paper. But we'll give it a go. We might do it thicker. And then I've also got book page. We'll just tear those down. And let's just start having going. Obviously, this is going to affect the colour of what I'm doing. So on these little ones, I might come over here and do some of these colours, which I really like. I'm, I'm struggling also just getting my colours going because um, I haven't, oh there's a nice colour so I want to mix up a few different shades um, of the one colour so I might come in and add a little bit of green in here and get a more brownie colour, you can add a bit more pink so I want a few shades there's some pink happening over here but this is how I get it um, and I've, you know, expert painters, I've heard them say that if you want your colours to work well together, then you um, sort of mix them in in the same colour, if that makes sense. Okay, we'll, we'll have a go. We'll see what happens. There's, we could test the colour here. Okay, so probably I will start with this one. Let's just get a bit more. I'm just going to grab a bit of purple, a bit of green to darken it. And I'm going to start. I'm going to do little circles on. Oh, see, it's not very... Um, I want it darker. I'm going to start with um, the, what I consider to be the darkest. Actually, I'll do a few. Maybe we'll do... Let's see what happens on this one. Okay. And we'll do another one. So you can do a whole lot at the same time. Okay, then I'm going to go into this colour here. I'll start on this one first. Looks fairly similar, doesn't it? But it's different. We'll see how they dry. They do dry slightly different. And then I'm going to go into this. Did I use that colour already? No, this colour I want. But I need to make it a bit more, a bit different. I might add some more, maybe add some yellowy green. Right. Yeah, that's better. Got to make it different. More orangey. They might all just look the same on the straw paper. And then I'm going to go. I'll just clean it off a little bit. 
go into the pink and I'm going to add a bit more pink in here. And there we've got our variation in colours, not so much on here. But it works better on the straw paper really with acrylic paints. So I'll do that one. And I might mix a bit more over here some of these colors to make it a bit more murky and just put another bit there and there okay we'll put those aside to dry but you can see they're all slightly different colors but they all are related to each other on these ones I like to do might go into the let's see what colors can we do let's grab this color over here I'm mixing it too in with what's on there. I might just add a tiny bit of blue. And it's nice with the watercolour too because it um, just doesn't cover everything up. And let's see how we go with this. A bit more. Usually for these ones I change my brush, but I haven't done that today. But just slowly moving into a different colour. And I literally, I mean, I use them up in a flash when I make them. And that's why I hadn't done them for a while. So I really want to do a lot of them. Um, because they're great things to, um, to use. We'll do one of those. So yeah, you could lay your strips out. I forgot to do that here. You could lay your strips out right across and do more of the one color on a few. Book page is good, ledger paper, any types of paper where you've got all some sort of font underneath or script looks nice. Go back in there. And they're really lovely. When they dry, they are really lovely. It's a bit similar to the one before, slightly different. My goal is to get little circles, but <laughs> that may or may not happen. A bit more pinky. And then I'm gonna go a little bit more. What color did I put in there before? One of these, oh, I'll just grab a bit of this one, put that in there. Go a little bit more orangey, orangey brown. Yeah, I like that. I love the variety in colour. So put those aside. You can see you can start to get a collection, quite a collection up. Now on the straw paper, I'm not liking it as much because it, the, it's in. I need more acrylic for those. So I'll put those aside and I will do those with acry acrylic. So I'm going to start here again. I'm going to add a bit more of some sort of green there. Oh, it's very brown. I'll add a bit more green. Oh, that's a lot of green. I don't normally have green on this side. I normally have um, that on the other side, but it doesn't matter. This is quite a small one, so I won't be going too far with that. Put some more on there. And you can wipe your, you know, you can wipe it. It's watercolour, so you can wipe your palette off. But um, I like to um, leave it. But if I've got the green, I might take the green off. And, and um, everything's going to become green on this side now. I kind of mix it a little bit in there, but I didn't want to get too much. Put three colors on this one I can fit four on this one I'm not trying to be neat or anything like that over here oh I forgot to do the one over there that's okay I'll go backwards and do that go back into here 
that crazy. Yep. Over here, get some more of that brighter pink. And I'm going to skip that. I'm going to go straight into this yellowy colour and I'm going to put that down here so it's quite different. You'll see how nice they are when they dry. Okay. Okay. So I already get starting to get quite a collection of them. Now, my other thing I wanted to do, and then we're going to do something else. I've got a few little things. Oh dear, that's not good. Okay. I'm going to put these over here to dry. And we're going to move over here into these blues. And I don't even mind having a bit of oh green, really. A lot of green here. I'm going to put some more blue in there. Blue and purple. And black. Yeah, they're nice. Oh, let's just prepare some more colours. Uh, papers. I've got a bit of ledger paper. So sometimes the ledger papers have a bit of an oil on them and they don't um, take so well to the colour. Um, and sometimes they do work really well. But we'll see. I do find I like to tear them first because I get a bit out of control um, as to how big they are. Like you could just do a full sheet, but then I start to expand. And you can do, like you can even do, actually we can even do, oh that's stuck there. Oh, we'll just tear that off. Okay, so we had this colour. Let's lay a few out. Little circles on these ones. And then I'm going to do little groupings, I think. I'm going to change the colour a little bit. We don't have that colour on here, so we can put that on there. Just go back and add a bit more purple in that just to have a different colour happening on here. Oh, we can have that colour on these as well. Okay, and then we might go into put a little bit of green in that with that purple. kind of get little colour stories going on. If I was really clever, I would be taking note of my colours. Um, but I'm not doing that. I'm going to just go in with my dirty pen, pen, my dirty brush and go in there. That one's finished. I love those colours. Love that colour combination. Do that one. not worrying if they're perfect circles or not and then I'm sort of thinking as I go into these um, I might like to go into a more mustardy sort of yellow on the ones that have more space so I might grab well, not mustardy but I'm going to go into here and see what happens so there's a bit of a brown so that one's finished. And then I'm going to grab some of this colour. No, this colour. Let's 
just motor on yeah And then I'm going to grab some more. Where's the purple? Put some more purple in there. It might come down here because these ones you can just rip up and then use bits and pieces. These are all finished. So you can end up with a whole lot of murky colors here, but I love them. So then I might say, I like that row, or I like that row, I might like that row, I might like all of it. You know what I mean? Like you can just um, choose which bit. To these colours over here. That's very similar. Let's add something to that. some sort of grey colour there and then what will I add to that a blue and there we go I've got a nice sheet there to use now the other thing I wanted to do was I'm just going to put this over to dry or move these over to dry and I wanted to do it on fabric now fabric could also be good if you did it um, with acrylic paint. But I thought I'd just give the um, fabric a go with, oh, let's start over, oh, now I've ruined that. There we go. So let me just, yep, that's gonna be good. So I'm gonna do first the little circles. I just dab it on in the center. And you can do all the same color if you want to, but I like the variation in the color that you can get. I need a bit more water in it. Okay, that's better. And just sort of, yeah, that's what I was doing before. I did give it a test run before I started the video. Um, just plenty of water and just let it, kind of let it blend out. I'll be interested to see how it dries too, because it will be, um, you know, It'll dry lighter than what we're seeing now, but I love it. I'm gonna go back and do another one of those. I'll just leave a bit of space. You know, you might get little wonky circles. It doesn't really matter. Just make sure there's plenty of water in it because you want it to bleed out. And if it doesn't, then just go and you know manually paint the circle. I just love these colors. Obviously, this is not color fast. This is watercolor. So if I go, um, if I go and put that in the washing machine or in the water at all, it's going to come out. So you just you have to be warn, be wary of that. It's just really for you. I would really just use it for journaling. I wouldn't, um, you know put it on a quilt or anything like that because it's not gonna it's not gonna hold where's the purple over here we'll get a bit more purple in that and then I'm going to go into the green which will make mud but it will still go because it's mixed in with those colors there there we go um, and then we can do 
the squares, but I might ch might try the filbert brush. Where is it? I saw it here before. Lots of bodgy brushes in here. Um, where did I see it? It was in here in the middle. Okay, so I'll use this one. This was not the one I was looking for. It's the ones that, that are sort of rounded at the top. Oh, I pulled it out. What a ding dong. Here it is. Anyway, I've pulled out a smaller one. And what will we do? Maybe start with need more water. That's a bit bright, that colour. But anyway, I'm going to put it here. It will be tainted by the other colours, which I want. Sort of dirty it up. Kind of like the little... Oh, it's coming out as a circle. I was intending for it to be, but they're bigger circles, in theory. I wanted to do the, you know, the squares, but I don't think they're going to happen with the, because the fabric's soaking it up. Or do big ones. But I'm not going to judge either my colours until I sort of see um, what happens with them when they dry. actually easier to do the blobby ones with um, this and go into the blue okay so oh look at that I love what it's doing look at on the other side you could choose to have it on the other side so I'm gonna let that dry and let's just have a look let me just wash my brushes um, I did do a sample one, but I think it might still be wet. It is still wet. So what I might do is I'm going to let them dry and then I'm going to come back and we'll just have a little play with these, especially these fabric ones, but I do need to let them dry. So I think I'll go and put them out on the terrace um, and then after lunch I'll come back and finish off my video. So I'll see you in a minute. Okay guys, so I'm back, it's after lunch and I have all my bits, they've dried. This was one that I had um, started before I turned the camera on and I just finished it off and I'll be ripping that up into little pieces of paper. And then these are all ones that we did on camera. Aren't they pretty? And see, you can see everything underneath, it's so pretty. I just love them and I'm gonna make a whole lot. Even I don't even mind that but I might, oh, you know, we could have tried um, stamping, um, they're the fabrics, stamping uh, the straw paper and then doing it on top of that. Like stamping with a script would be nice. But anyway, so uh, with the fabric one, this is dry. This is one I did off camera. Um, I'm going to put it on some ticking and it can be an embellishment for a tag. So I'm going to do some, I've got just some navy blue Appleton wool. I would have used just a regular Moulinet, um, you know, stranded thread, but I um, didn't have any navy blue. So I'm using my wool, which will just give it more texture. So you can use any thread that you have. And I want to do, I want it to be quite, I wanted it to be thick. That's why I chose a wool. Although this wool is pretty old and it's not in very good condition. Look at that. It's going to come apart already. It's got problems. Maybe I'll leave that. I think I'll go down. See, it's gone all thin. I'm going to go down here. I'm going to end it off. Oh, no, I don't need to really end it off. Well, or, or will I? So I wanted it thick. Hmm. I think we'll start again because that's just going to break. Okay, let's start again. Naughty wool. Let's see if we can have another go. So I'm just going to do some rows of running stitch. Anyone can do it. As long as your wool doesn't keep on breaking. Did I ask everyone how they were today? I don't remember. I think I just got right into it. So I'll ask you now, how are you? Again, remember this is not something you'd put on a quilt that you're going to be washing every day, but you can certainly put them in journals. A 
I wanted to try not to be too regular. I'm just pushing the, moving forward, pushing the um, fabric onto the, onto the needle. Really easy. So if you're wanting to add a little bit of texture to a journal that you you know you have a deep spine that will allow it because obviously this is going to add a little bit of bulk um, then you can add these on the edge of a page or embellish a tag with them I'm trying not to be even I'm, I purposely set that one a bit further away that row I'm going to do two more because I need a new, new piece of length of thread. Yes, that's the issue with the walls. When they become a bit old, they um, do come apart a little bit. You just have to be patient. And probably not a good idea to use super long lengths. I think I will have some more sessions doing this. Might have to start this row a bit further down. A dark grey, a navy blue, um, dark brown, they're all colours that I kind of, or red, um, are colours that I like to see on these sorts of things. I'm wondering whether I want to do the whole thing stitched or not. I think I will. If I was really tricky, I could have had the stitches going that way in the opposite direction to the ticking that I have put behind. So then another two rows. I will do the variation from last week's project, um, but I just thought we'd have, do something different this week. And a bit further down the track, I'll do the variation of last week's project. I might think of other variations as well. I'll do one more row here. You can just sit and do these in front of the TV, just Stitch them all and have them in a little container. Okay, and then I'm going to do another little bit. So that's that. I love that. And then maybe I'll stitch one of these. I've got two of those. I did those in a... Oh, they're a little bit damp. That one's drier. I'm going to do probably three rows on here. You could stitch around the circles, you could put little plus signs, French knots, whatever you like. You could just go around the outer edges. But running stitch is fairly quick and easy to do. I think I'll just do three because it's not very wide. Maybe we'll do something with, with some of these little bits that we've created.
So I actually did mine, my, um, I didn't tell you that, my swatching was done on, it was an antique hemp that I had a piece left over from something. And um, so I just did it on that because I like the texture of it and I like the colour of it. It's a bit of an oatmeal -y sort of colour, off, oatmeal -y, off white sort of colour. Whoops. Do need to end it off, otherwise it'll come out. Unless you glue it down on something, which I probably am going to. So, but I will try and end it off because it's a bit short. I didn't want to have to thread another one, but then I've had to thread that one, haven't I? Okay, let's try. And there we go. Put a knot in there. So I also like the reverse side as well. When you're stitching, I like the look of that. Okay, it's a bit more irregular. So let's just have a look and see. We've got a couple of stitch ones. We've got some plain ones there. I think I did that one with you guys, did I? A part of it. I like the reverse side too. It's definitely need to do more of those. That one, and I'm going to hoard them, you know that. I love them with the stitching on. Okay, so let's have a little think. Um, I've got plenty of, of ephemera that I've started making that I haven't finished that's in my box here. Did I put it in here or did I put it in my other box? Let's see. Or it's in here, or it's in my what's in my box. I did become very messy and just start dumping things. No, it's none of that. They're not. Well, let's take an envelope. See, we might embellish an envelope with one. I think I put them in my what's in my box. So I'll just hop over there and I'll grab grab it in a minute let's just I just want to do this envelope first so we'll fold it so I'm not going to glue this one closed because actually with a darker pen you can write on there so it's actually doubles up as an envelope a not sealed envelope and a writing sort of area Oh, aren't they pretty? I haven't even folded these yet. These are the ones in the latest kit that we did. Oh, so pretty. So that's the bottom and that's... No, that's the bottom and that's the top. Okay. So... I'm wondering if I will use... I mean, I'll even just use a little... Oh, I like that. I'll just take a little piece that there but I think I might like it with just a tiny bit of I've got some scraps of textile here I mean I do keep the most pathetic pieces but sometimes you really need your pathetic pieces just like a little piece of that no like that maybe that over there coming off the edge and that yep I like that. I'm going to grab this glue because this glue will stick down the, the fabric. I get myself into such a mess. I've put glue all over it so I can't have it hanging too far over the edge and then So mushy. Oh, I love that. And then I might. Oh, I didn't show you. I've got to show you what I did. I love it. I did it last when just after I released the when we did our first. I tidied up my um, my label folio. Um, so look, I've 
got on my lathe the big ones i couldn't put them all together because i didn't have the right pockets for the smaller ones in the next pages so i tidied up those um they're my book plates all of those sort of ornate ones look at these look how tidy that is and then look here they are and i'm thinking do i want do i want a label on there i don't think so oh I did end up cutting those out. I couldn't help myself. I was watching someone's video. I, was, I think I might have been watching a Wendy video while I was sitting doing it. And I put those there, these stamped ones. And then I gathered all of these and put those there. And then they're stamped ones. And then I, look, I don't have any red left. And they're all my black ones. Um, the blues, the greens, and then they're the antique ones that I love. And I use all the time. I don't know that I want one. I could have something like that. Oh, is that the one with the lion? Let's try that one. And I haven't sorted out my stamps. My stamps will go into my stamp one, which is a bit of a mess at the moment. Um, so this is my stamp one. And these are real stamps, but I have plenty of space, I think, in this one. Let's see. I think I do. I've got plenty of space at the end. Oh, now I filled it. Oh, oh, I never used those. Remember those, the days of those ones with the napkins? They would with the they would be, That'd be a two-year-old video, that one. I could put some stamps. I need to create space for my stamps, so I need to tidy up the stamps, and they're going to go in there. Okay, so I didn't see a label. Oh, I did. Oh gosh, don't you? I don't want to use my fabric scissors. I'll put those right out of sight. So today we are swatching on fabric and old pages of ephemera or whatever. I'm going to put that there. I know. I think Steffi's done that upside down. That doesn't really matter. I probably should have done it the other way around. Put that there. I think I've stuck it on upside down. I need to stick that down better. So that's just one little idea to embellish. I mean, I could have put it on, like it could have been really pretty on that side too. So we've got the little envelope there, but I want to see what else I have. I did. I put it all over here. Clever thing that I am. Okay, so I've got these. These are some of our tags just put onto the Tim Holtz paper. And I'm wondering what I might like to do on here. See, I want to hoard them. I just want to keep them. Oh, look at that. Mm. I don't think I'll put these on here. I could take a little piece. Not on that one. I could put that. Oh, I really like that, actually. I really do like that. Those colours are fabulous on there. So you know what I'm going to do? I don't know if my stapler will go through it, but I'm going to try and staple it onto here. I might put just a tiny dash of glue to hold it. I think it's a really nice way of adding your personal touch to something that's already... I love that. Ooh. Of course, you can do it with the paper ones too. Oh, it didn't go through. I only went through half. I'll do two. Oh, that one went through. Good. Okay, so there'll be two staples in, but I really like that. I'm going to consider that one done. Okay. And then, well, there's, I've got lots of tags. We just did a tag. Let's see what else there is. I want to use one of the stitched bits. Can 
big. That one's too big. For the, isn't that pretty? You could have a really crazy big one. I love that too. See, I want to stitch that now, but I don't want to put you through it. That one, I'm, I'm going to use that one on the edge of a page, or you could put it on the edge of some sort of journal card. Oh, something like that. I don't know. It's, it's a bit hoardy for me at the moment, so I'm going to hang on to that one for a minute. Isn't that silly? But I do get a bit hoardy with them. But on these, this is just from a, um, a book. Like you could, you could actually like take something like this. See, this would work on the, and take the colors. Do swatching. Oh, that's a good idea. Do swatching from the colors that you see in the in the piece in the um, postcard. For some reason, these little ones are my favorites. Oh, I think I like that. I'm going to take those two little bits off. I'm going to put that there or am I going to put it there or there and no, I'm going to put it up there and I think I'm going to put a faux stamp on it as well I love that I love the little bit of type in there and I attach that sorry about the mess here and then I'm going to add one of Steffi's stamps I'm going to get grab the small ones here they are choose one. Do I have those scissors out? I think I'll put them away. That colour. So I'm going to glue that one down there so it's balanced. I love it. And then I will stamp a little bit on top of it. I don't know if I've got the stamp still here on my table. I think, I, oh yes, I do. I do. Just do a little registered stamping. And do a little secondary one up there. There we go. Oh, I love that. <clears throat> so that's that one. And let's see. I had this one out. I wanted to do something on. That's interesting. Um, I did a little bit more swatching on here too. Because once you start, you can't stop. like to see these kinds of colors on there but I do like them with the stitching on them I think I'm just going to attach that one there or yeah there so I'm going to put some glue on so that one's without stitching and do I want anything else? It's already got its own stamp on it. I think that's fine. Okay. And we'll do a couple more things just to have a play with them because it's fun to make and then have a play. I do have this lovely piece. This is from, let's punch the corners. This is from um, a book, some book. I don't know what book it was. Is that telling me I need to empty it? And it's easier said than done. Oh, got it. Okay, emptied. Um, 
Oh, yes, I did need to empty it. Isn't that pretty? Right. Get those in the rubbish. So pretty. Okay, so on this one, oh, I would love that on there. It's too big. Unless I were to put a big thing. No, I want a little one. So, no, 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 no. I'm thinking I might tear this off and fold that over and put that on there. Do I want to put just a little piece of, I don't know if my, as I say, my stapler may not go through it. We'll, we'll see. There. I do like that little pop of red there. Okay, well, I'm going to glue it on, but I'll also glue that onto there. So if the stapler doesn't go through, it's glued. Put it slightly down there, and I'm going to put a little bit of glue here. And here. And it went through. Yay. Good. Cool. I mean, very simple things. Nothing too overly complex at all. Really not complex. Let's have a look at these ladies. So these are all on, um, you know, cardstock. Again, here you could see maybe a little bit. Oh, I love that. Just a little bit from their dresses and just stick that down there. Or I think I'll have it up there in that gap. Um, so that's a fun exercise. So take your images and a variety of images and, and do swatching from the images. I think it's a lesson in colour to doing that. I've, I think I've heard of that before. So I'm going to put that there and nothing else, I don't think. Love that. Unless we want little. You know what? They may come out to play quite a lot. This one. I actually really like the crunching sound. I know not everybody likes the crunching sound, but I do. Crunches away. Hold it up there so I can get that off. And that one goes like that. Oh, yes, and I am putting that down there. Yes, I am. So you get the gist. I definitely think it's worthwhile making up a whole box. And, and I don't have a whole box here. And you can see how quickly they start to disappear when you start using them. We'll just stamp on that one. Where's my ink? Oh, I put it up there. That was clever. I like it on that as well. So that's another idea. Like these ones that don't have any writing, you could possibly take let's just give it a go I mean I can always paint them again if I don't like it but you could maybe take this I'll just do a little bit see if we like it we might not like it and just stamp it I'll do a bit more actually and I might just stamp a bit here to take some off and then so you can put you, you can put the writing on if you don't have any beautiful old script if you have a nice stamp 
We all have some sort of scripty stamp. Look at that. There we go. We put it on. So you can go ahead and do stamping on them. You might have little mini stamps that you might like to stamp in there sort of thing. So who knows? I mean, the possibilities are endless. So we've had a little play with the painted swatches. So that's that one. Um, loving the fabric ones. And I'm loving the fabric ones with the stitches, but I haven't used them yet because I'm hoarding them. So I need to make a whole lot of them before I'll use them. That's what happens. And I love that. Love, that's like one of my faves. And then just on the envelope. But I wonder... Let me just go through this pile here and see if there's anything that I think, oh, I'm going to put the stitch one on just quickly before I go. Because um, really I would want to put it like that. So I need something big enough that it can fit on. I like that one sort of thing. But I might like to use it in a collage on a page too. That also might be something I might like more than sticking it on one of these but then again if you find the right one so it could go across the top of something too i keep rejecting everything of course because i'm hoarding it i actually quite like it on the old photograph I, that that is interesting to me i think it's the colors too so i do quite like that but let's just see it on other ones oh i like it with the with the ladies, the Italian ladies, um, even a smaller piece, like cut, if I did, these are all in threes, but if I were to cut this this way, I can have it there stitched, it would be quite nice. Oh, wouldn't that be nice folded over like that? I mean, the possibilities are really, just do whatever takes your fancy, is what I can say. Um, just, yeah, I'm just looking. See, this one could be nice on here and then just fold it around to the other side, but uneven. So more on this side and less on that side. That could also happen. These ones I feel like I want to put, I might put a bird or something on, the, I would like it on that one. See, I might put that one there. Yep, okay. Just, just looking at uh, different ideas. Nice on that one too. So just looking at different ideas. Um, and then this big one, I would. This is big. It's the only reason I'm not putting it on a journal card is it's because it's very big. I mean, I could. I could even fold down. I mean, that's nice. Fold that down, and glue that on a journal card. Would like that. Yes, I do like that idea actually. So that might go on there. I'll just audition the other ones and see which one I like the best. So I hope you enjoyed that video. It's a bit um, different to what we normally do, but a lot of fun and um and very useful little bits and pieces and very easy to do um what i would remind you is if you want to get the variation in color instead of having them all you know like if you start off with a green and then have them all the same you use but you want and then but you want them sort of to go together um always you start from one color and then you add a bit of another color and and then paint but you never wash your brush and then I, you know, add a little bit of purple, maybe add a little bit, you know. So you just move from one color to the next. But also, um, if you're going in a study of colors, um, I think this one, except for the green, um, there is a very slight variation in those colors. You can't see, but I probably could have made them vary even further if I tried really hard. This one has a better variation in color. So um, otherwise you end up with, they'd all be pale pink or pale green or dark green. And you didn't get the variation in color but i really like the variations happening see i got it there as well so i hope you enjoyed that and thank you so much for watching and i will see you again soon bye